Hello everybody and welcome back to RimWorld. We are in the process of remodeling uh, Minyaka and Tronka's house to uh, get it ready for their child that's on the way. Uh, they've recently also adopted Crowbar um, as, as a child as well. Um, so this is going to be a three bedroom house um, and it's going to be completely changed. So right now everything is a little bit of a mess. but. Probably in a couple of days this will all be sorted and it'll be looking better than ever. Um, things on our to-do list um, is going to be research, hopefully lots of research. Since it's winter and we don't have much farming to do, um, our colonists will have plenty of time to do research and cleaning and getting caught up on all those kinds of tasks. Um, I think next spring, once we have stone cutting researched, we're going to start um, replacing some of our um, walls with stone walls or maybe um, making this throne room look a little more grand and elegant. I think we might also start considering getting some like stone artwork into the colony to um, just kind of like make it a little more livable, make it a little more nice and beautiful for our, for our colonists. Um, and then a big project, but Probably one that's a little farther down the line is going to be building a big wall that kind of encloses this whole area um, around here. So that there's really only one entrance into the base that we need to defend and fortify and this is it right here. Um, we might can create like a secondary exit to the north but um, that's, that's further down the line so we don't need to plan that out too specifically. Um, one thing I am noticing is we have a bunch of weapons from all these raiders who come by and quite frankly i'm not interested in most of the weapons especially the poor ones and they're not really even worth that much money so what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna go ahead and create a stockpile zone out here in like the middle of the ocean oh apparently i can't create a stockpile zone there not sure why. I can create a stockpile zone here. Okay. Shallow ocean water. That's probably fine. And what we're going to have here is we're going to have um, storage for all of our unwanted goods. Um, so we can create one storage for um, we can have this be corpses, but not all corpses. We just really want human corpses that are not colonists, so they can be strangers, um, slaves, unnatural corpses, yeah. So these will be all the raiders, we can dump them in here. We can create another stockpile zone. The reason I'm putting it in the water, by the way, is I think things degrade and decompose faster in the water. Um, we can create another stockpile zone right here, and what we're going to put in here can be... Um, you know what we should add to this? We should add animal corpses. Uh, no, I think we'll create a separate one for animal because we only want human corpses. They can be fresh or rotten, but for the animal corpses, we only want to have rotten animal corpses. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this one, sure, we can put animal corpses, but they can only be rotten. If they're fresh animal corpses, of course, they belong in the fridge. Okay, uh, and then we can create another zone. Where is it? Zone, stockpile zone. Um, and here we can say, we're gonna clear all, and then what we want to put in here are going to be apparel and weapons. But, but only the ones that are poor or awful, or the ones that are degraded. Oh, I guess we need to have separate stockpile zones. Okay, so we're gonna shrink this one in half. And then we can create a new zone. Yep, just like this. And here we can say clear all and we can have apparel and weapons. And this one is just for the bad quality ones and this one will be for the degraded ones. So we'll have anything 
say like 50% and under, we'll go in here. And now we just need to set the priority to all of these as probably critical. So they take priority over all other things. And now hopefully any like random, like poor quality knives or anything that are just sitting around, will just get automatically hauled, hauled away. Crowbar is taking his learning and his studies very seriously. So that's great. And would you look at this? We're almost ready. Did not mean to type in X there. We're almost ready to put together this new and improved house. I think we can have rooms over here and here. These will be the two kids rooms. This will be the master bedroom. I think we'll have the master bedroom not doored off. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to go floors, wood floor. We want to make sure there is a wood floor covering every square of this house. We can go to floors, remove floor. We can get rid of this wooden floors on the outside. Not necessary anymore. We can reinstall this bed. Uh, I think probably a nice place for the bed would be right here. We can reinstall. No, we don't want to build, reinstall it. It's a poor end table. We're just going to build a new one. We're going to build a new two end tables. In fact, uh, we can reinstall this, this, uh, wooden dresser to be somewhere in the room. Um, I think we're going to have the wooden dresser probably like this. I think this is a nice place for it. How are we doing on wood? We only have 164 wood in the stockpile. So, so that we don't freeze to death this winter. Let's go ahead and queue up a bunch of chopping for our colonists to get caught up on. Looking at you, Tronka, our resident lumberjack. Um, and then here for the children's bedrooms, um, I think, how do we want to lay this out? This feels like the right place for a bed to be. Um, and then there's a good end table here, so we can go ahead and just reinstall that end table like that. Um, we can reinstall this probably right here next to the couch, I would think. Yeah, I think, uh... I think this will be a nice place for it. And we can have the couch here. And then we're gonna probably wanna rebuild this campfire. We're gonna wanna build another vent, to be honest. Make sure this is a well-ventilated uh, house. We build another vent here. Hospitality for a scout. Christ Chief of the Treaty of Guaboa is requesting a favor. Her friend, Worm Trosora, is interested in learning about other cultures and she wants you to host her at Aswar for 19 days. Worm will not do any work. In return, we can get a bunch of books. I'm very excited. I like this. Um, this is a book that improves intellectual score. This is a book that provides recreation. And this is a book that gives us uh, carpet making as a research. I like all of these. We can finally put some books on our bookshelf. I think we're going to go ahead and accept. Okay, so we have a visitor, Worm. I think we're in a good place to take care of this worm. Um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a bed for Worm. That's fine. We can go ahead and do that easy enough. Put a uh, nightstand right here next to the bed. And this can be Worm's bed. This will eventually be the children's bedroom, but for now it can be Worm's bedroom. Lots of wood for the colony now. Hopefully we won't be running out anytime soon. Yeah, there's plenty of wood just sitting out here to 
degrading in the elements. Welcome, Worm. We're gonna go ahead and assign this one to you. This can be your bedroom. Okay, now as far as this common room goes, uh, let me get the, all of this um, other furniture out of the way as well. Um, this is kind of gonna help determine where things need to go. We have a stool here that we can just deconstruct. We have an animal bed that we can probably reinstall at the foot of their bed. We can probably reinstall this crib as well, right there. Um, we can probably reinstall this toy box somewhere in the room. All right, we finished uh, we finished researching stone cutting. I think our next important thing to research will be, I mean, electricity would be nice, but what does smithing get us? Some interesting kind of medieval weapons. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Let's go for smithing. All right, perfect. Uh, we are gonna reinstall this toy box here. We can also reinstall this um, child's toy right here. We're gonna wanna build a new end table like that. And there we go, this place is kinda cleared out. The space is cleared out much better. Um, now, of course, this is going to be a big house with a lot of people so we're gonna want a lot of seats around the table so I think the table should kind of play a prominent role in this kind of gathering space um, I think this is a nice place for the table and I actually think we want to extend this out maybe just a little bit we can have some dining chairs all around the table oops not this. There we go, that's better. Uh, we're gonna want um, some place for them to cook. I know we don't have the steel for this, so none of these are actually getting built. Maybe instead of having one big couch, we have a couple of like individual chairs. So we can have like one here. We can have like one here or something. I think that'll be fine. Just some places for people to lounge around and hang out kind of essential gathering area. Perfect. What a nice looking house. And the last step, of course, is going to be building our communal fire. Um, I think a good spot for the fire to go is probably here, out of the way. We can deconstruct this fire and we're just gonna want some lights to go different places. We can have a light for this room. We can have a light for this room. We can have probably a light for this room there. We can have a light for the hallway, um, like here. And then we can probably just deconstruct this, this lamp right here. Perfect. All right, somebody's gonna have a major brick break and it's Minyaka and I don't know why. She's recreation starved. Well, what kind of recreation do you want? We've got a hoop stone and <laughs> I think that's all we have. What do people do for recreation around here? Hmm. I guess uh, people like playing Ur. Okay. We create like a a game table or something in this in this dining room, maybe. We're eventually gonna want to put it in a different place in the dining room. Maybe we have a nice little like outside area where people can play. Yeah, let's have a little area right here, and then next to it, we can put a couple stools for people to play er outside. And then we can go zone. We can just go expand, build roof area right there. Um, then we want to get rid of this border to 
ignore roof area. And we want to build a roof over this whole house. I think currently Minyaka and Chanka are sleeping in the cold. All right, so there is a grizzly bear hunting worm for food. This is concerning. Worm is our guest, and it'll probably reflect very poorly on us if we let our guest die. So, everybody, let's come here to defend worm. Oops. Guess we didn't get off any shots before it was too late. Poor Tronka is just getting completely mauled. His left ear got torn off. Okay, wow. Um, poor Tronka just had his ear torn off. Hope he's okay. He's gonna die in six hours without any treatment. All right, who's taking care of him? Minyaka, are you? Yeah, Minyaka's tended to Tronka. Apparently there's a distress signal. We've, inter we've intercepted a distress signal from the nearby camp of Lipoin Unification. The frantic voice begs for immediate assistance defending against a threat. They offer everything at their camp in return for help, including shards of powerful Arco technology. The voice tries to explain the nature of the threat. The signal goes dead. Let's see where this is. If it's feasible, we might actually consider a road trip to go help them. I don't know if this is a good idea though. Maybe we, we wait. How long until this quest expires? We have 15 days. We have 15 days. I think we'll wait until Tronka is fully healed and Jay gets over his mental break. So one thing I think we might do is we have a tailoring bench in here, um, but we could actually add in a crafting spot. And the reason I want to add in a crafting spot is because we can actually craft our own bows. And what I'm noticing here is that if we go and we look at Tronka has a masterwork recurve bow. Okay, that's really good. But Jay and Olga are just equipped with normal tier bows. So let's see if we can craft some a couple recurve bows and see if we can't get something that's good or excellent. Just see what we can come up with. We put our, um, our crafter to the task. Now we don't have anyone assigned to crafting right now, so we're going to say Olga can craft at priority 2 right now. There you go, Olga. Minyaka, of course, has a normal steel mace. I think that's probably good enough until we can actually research making our own maces. One drawback of this is I think the better tier your weapons are, the more like you are to just kill people and raiders outright rather than crippling them. So we're going to have left chan less chances of recruiting new people into the colony. That being said, we've already got one, two, three, four, five, and a six on the way. We've already got plenty of people in the colony, but not really that needy for new people. So red fox hunting crowbar, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, crowbar is already bolting to the nearest door. That's fine. Get to safety. Okay. There's a war merchant coming to visit. Oh my gosh, maybe we can buy some good weapons from them. What kinds of recurve bows were we able to craft here, by the way, Olga? Anything good? Or did it go straight into the... Well, we can check. It went straight into the pile. It was a recurve bow that was of poor quality. But there's only one way for Olga to get better, and that's for him to just practice his crafting more and more. He's already on his way to level 9 crafting. Um, who is our best social person? Minyaka has social skill level 7. Jay has social skill level 9. So let's have Jay go ahead and trade with these war merchants. Okay, let's see what we can do. We can sell some stuff. We can sell a normal short bow. We can sell a poor recurve bow. 
We can sell a normal recurve bow. We're really looking after good quality stuff. They sell wargs. These might be good kind of defensive pets to have. Though I'd prefer dogs to wargs, to be honest. Anything else we can sell? We can sell a steel axe, a normal level steel axe. That's probably fine. We can sell this slate club. Um, we can buy a good level great bow. That won't put us that much money out. Or a good level recurve bow. We could buy both of these for only $220. I think that's a good deal. Okay. Perfect. So we've got a couple new weapons. So we're going to keep Tronka with the masterwork level bow, but we're going to equip these good bows on the other people. Um, so Jay currently has shooting skill of 11, so we'll probably put the great bow on Jay. Okay, so Jay's going to equip the good level great bow. Tronka is going to equip the good level recurve bow. And then we, we're going to just go right back ahead and sell those two. Oh no, Tronka should keep the masterwork recurve bow. It's Olga that can have the good recurve bow. Of course, a red fox is hunting crowbar again. Where is crowbar? Crowbar is getting out of harm's way. Okay. That's it. Everybody, attack the fox. No! No, 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 no. I swear, this is the second time this has happened. Stop going after the poor kid. Oh my gosh. And we're melee attacking it like nuts. Crowbar just had an eye torn out. Okay, we're gonna have another kid with an eye patch. Oh my gosh. Well, that happened. We have another one-eyed kid. The last one-eyed kid we had died, so. Jesus Christ. All right, and I think we're gonna end the episode here. Um, real damn shame what happened to Crowbar. We might have to deal with this uh, this raid next time. A group of cultists from the Servants of Horax have arrived nearby. They intend to use a psychic ritual to summon hideouts, hideous flesh beasts to attack you. Okay, we're definitely going to deal with this in the next time. First thing, we're going to recruit everybody, move them over there, and try to interrupt this, this ritual. Looks like there's only two of them, so it shouldn't be too tough of a raid. Um, like I was saying, real shame what happened to Crowbar. Um, we're going to have... A kid with an eye patch. He'll be just like, um, what was his name? Gorilla, right? Yeah, Gorilla was our other kid who had his eye kind of poked out by something. I can't remember how he lost his eye. But anyways, it seems like that's a recurring theme in our colony. If you want to be a kid, you have to be one-eyed. Oh, hopefully that doesn't happen to our new kid as well. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>